Okay, guys. Hi, uh, and welcome to another. Uh, I don't know. Does this even have a, a a name? I guess my live my live show. Okay, so uh, if you have got any problems physics related, uh, or you just want to chat about some f cool physics stuff, uh, then sure, why not? Let's uh, let's let, let's do this. Okay, of course. Uh, this is, you know, I'm playing with this technology, so uh, I just need to uh, reconnect the um, tablet back up. And I thought, I thought I'd solve these problems because what I was doing was, uh, let's go. Here we go. We're back. Okay, I thought I'd solve these problems because um, one of the problems I was having was that the webcam. It wasn't working. I just fixed that just before we came on here. Okay, hi guys. Okay, let's see how we uh, let's see how we're doing today. We're pretty responsive. So let's try this. Hello, world. Okay, that seems to be working. All right. Uh, I guess the question is, who's out there? Who is out there? Any problems? Physics related, please. Otherwise, I'm just gonna I'll just be here for an hour by myself, and I'll just chat to myself, and that's it. This be a video of me talking to myself. Uh, what should I talk about? Last week, good week. Oh, Jaden. Okay. Uh, can you explain about the sampling frequency? What is it? How do we use it? Okay, sampling frequency. Hi, Jaden. Hope you are well. Let me just pull up my notes because. Uh, okay, so this is from the uh, AS level, yeah. Uh, also, uh, Jaden, how how is my uh, my video today? Is it a bit? How does it seem? I've got a green light down here, which means I think I'm going out okay. So, hopefully everything's fine. Okay, let, I'm just let me just load up my notes here. Then uh, I can't. Uh, waves and sampling frequency. Where would that be? Isn't that in communication? I think. Is it in the communication section? Okay, so is it things like the bit depth? Let me have a look, I'm just... Where are we? Here we are. Okay, yeah, I've got my notes, so let me just pull it up on the screen, and then uh, you can see what I'm looking at. Uh, what is my, what what uh, what is the meaning of sample frequency? Must it be at least twice the maximum frequency to be sampled? Yeah, it is. Yeah, I I know there there is a rule. I think it's Ni is it Nyquist theorem or something like that. Is the idea of whatever the maximum sound you want to hear. Uh, the frequency that you sample at, okay, you have to, uh, the frequency that you sample at has to be twice as much as the sample that, the ma the highest frequency that you want to be able to sample. And I think that's why, uh, oh, the video is just great as usual. Okay, cheers mate. Okay, thank you. Okay, so I think that's the reason why, if you look at the CD, a CD, it's got a sample rate of 44 uh, kilohertz. I think the reason why it's 44 kilohertz is that human beings, we can generally only hear up to uh, uh, 20 kilohertz. Now, I know for a fact that I can't even hear up to 20 kilohertz because I always do this sound test with my students when we're doing... Uh, uh, you know, I'm going to turn the light off behind me because I can see it's bugging a little bit. That's a bit, that's a bit better. Yeah, uh, yeah, no, so I... I always do this sound test with my students uh, and uh, around 14, 15 kilohertz, I, I can't hear anything. I can't hear any sound waves. And, uh, you know, I used to go to a lot of like, I don't know, bands and stuff. And I guess my ear, my, my hearing is definitely uh, has got worse. I think it's you know, around 20. But I think like, Jalen, if you're a young guy, you should be able to hear up to about 20 uh, kilohertz. So therefore, if you want to hear it to 20 kilohertz, then you have to sample at twice the rate, okay? Uh, and I'll have a look for the reason why, and we'll try and explore it together, because uh, off the top of my head, I can't remember. <laughs> 
but let me let me find it for you now so let's have a look at my uh, I want a, a video capture I want a new capture uh, and I want to capture my notes which is here okay I'm just gonna put this down here for a second okay uh, let me make this a little bit bigger so let's avoid the tablet and then we can kind of discuss so this is the notes that I wrote for my students uh, I'm trying to scroll up and I'm being a totally duffed here uh, uh, okay, digital transmission of speech and music. Uh, so the digital transmission of speech and music involves an analog to digital converter before the transmission and a digital to analog conversion after. So the sound waves are analog in nature and need to be converted into a digital representation before they can be transmitted. Okay, okay. Uh, the, there's something additional here. Uh, you've got your microphone amplifier. Uh, analog to digital converter and then I'm sure there's a serial to parallel converter here and then parallel to serial converter here then a digital to analog converter uh, another amplifier and a, uh, a microphone uh, after conversion and transmission the digital signal is then converted back into an analog signal okay so this is your uh, digital samples uh, and then the, you can see like the original uh, analog waveform there Okay, so uh, the rate of capture, let me zoom in a little bit, make that a little bit bigger. Uh, let me see what you guys are looking at. Oh, that's too big. Uh, oh, okay, well, let's just go with that for a second. Okay, so uh, the rate of capture and playback is called the sampling rate. The sample size, more accurately, is the number of bits used to describe uh, each sample. Uh, it's called a bit depth or word length. The number of bits transmitted or... Sorry, the number of bits transmitted per second is the bit rate. Okay, so... Okay, so here I've got eight bits. So one, two, three, four, five, six... So like zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. Okay, so I've got eight bits here, eight bits here, and then this is sixteen bits. So the resolution of my amplitude is increased. And then the number of samples per second here and here. Uh so this is eight samples per second, whereas this is down here sixteen samples per second. On. increasing the number of bits reduces the step height while increasing the sample frequency reduces the step width just reproduction of the signal is closer to the original sound yeah, let me just move that out of the way for a sec so what is the meaning of sample frequency so the sample frequency Okay, let me go down here. Okay, so let's just say this is my real waveform, like that. So, the sample frequency would be how many times a second uh, do I look at the height of the wave? So, I'm measuring Okay, or the computer will measure, okay, or the uh, analog to digital converter is going to measure uh, where the wave is at any point in time. So, effectively, the higher the frequency of sampling, the more accurate you can uh, uh, reproduce the, the audio at the... Uh, 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 a digital to analog converter. So there's really there's really two there's two things really. Number one is like the sample the sampling rate. So obviously, if I sample just at a very low rate, something like that. Well, when it comes to putting these things back together, okay. So if I do that, well, I've, I've missed a big chunk there. Then I think okay, it goes down there there like that, there like that. Whereas here, if I put these parts together. 
okay it looks more like the original waveform okay so the greater the sample rate the closer you get to the uh, original waveform but you are right there is there is I think it's Nyquist sampling theorem uh, in fact let me have a look here because I've got an AQA book uh, oh by the way Jaden what uh, what what uh, exam board are you doing are you, are you doing uh, uh, the Cambridge or are you what are you, what are you doing are you where are you based in are you based in the UK or I'm just gonna put my tablet up here so you, you can tell me that for now I'm gonna have a look here I'm gonna cheat <laughs> because I can't remember the rule but and I, I do know there is something like yeah Nyquist sampling theorem uh, let's have a look here I know that's nuclear physics which is interesting uh, I remember a question in the past paper it said why is the sampling frequency of a compact disc greater than the sampling frequency of a telephone uh, I, well and I know really for speech I mean I, I mean I'm a I, I like doing uh, oh you say okay Cambridge A level yeah okay yeah I mean like uh, the bandwidth required for speech really for for, for for intelligent intelligible speech you only really need uh, a bandwidth of something like or I, th I think it's about three kilohertz it's not a very big it's not a particularly big bandwidth whereas uh, uh, you know if you listen to uh, an orchestra or something you've got so so much uh, a bigger bandwidth that's required because you've got different you know uh, instruments that have got a different audio range so I, th I think that would be the reason can you remember what it's on the uh, on the memo and or can you remember what year the paper was because I may have it on my hard drive here somewhere so I don't know if you I don't know if you can remember uh, where the, where the problem was and we can kind of have a look at look together um, so why is the sampling frequency of a compact disc yeah yeah that that's what I would you know that's what I would say and if you know um, it's hard to say without the memo really uh, but but I know the you know Nyquist sampling theorem is that whatever you, the sampling rate that you uh, sample at you can reproduce faithfully uh, only half the frequency so if you're something at 44.1 then it's going to be 22.05 uh, 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 kilohertz that you can uh, reproduce back I think the reason why is you get something called aliasing okay so I think aliasing is when yeah the resolution of the sampling is just not good enough to work out what the wave is really doing at that time and I think you get all kind of weird mathematical effects really going on but I'm not going to go any deeper than that okay but I do know you are right the idea that you have to you know whatever you want to reproduce you've got to have the sampling rate twice as high as whatever uh, whatever that is okay I hope that's cleared up a little bit Jaden uh, anything else I'm, I'm glad my tablet is definitely working a lot better and I can see I'm still on the green uh, that's much better yeah what I, what I did was just move the router so I've got the wireless router I just moved it closer I think okay let, let me think okay let me think of a way of So there, there's a wave if you were sampling like at the same frequency of the wave okay uh, so let's say, let's say let, okay so I just take my sample there yeah okay so that is sampling at the same rate as the wave is being produced so when it came to recreating what I thought was there oh well I'll just draw a line from there to there to there so uh, I won't it, it wouldn't make any sense I mean if I sample uh, the 
double the frequency, I guess. Okay, then at least when it comes to the computer reproducing what's going on, are you about to go, oh, it was there, then it was there, then it was there, then it was there, then it was there. Okay, so so that's something at twice as much, twice the frequency of the wave. Okay, it's not a very, very nice wave that you reproduce, but you can see if you sample at twice the rate, well, at least I'm getting like a, uh, a triangle wave and then probably you're gonna have some kind of smoothing filters in there as well. So I think that's the reason why you have to like sample at twice the twice the, the frequency of the, so twice the maximum frequency of what you want to, uh, <coughs> excuse me, what you want to measure. Okay, uh, Jaden, I hope that helped. Uh, anything else? Or is there anyone else out there? Uh, can I help anyone else? Any other questions? When we take the gravitations chapter. Ah, uh, now, well, do you want me to go through it? Okay. Okay, firstly, Jaden, I hope that helped. Uh, I'm going to go on with the Desi Gamer now. Okay, gravitations chapter. Okay, uh, let me just pull up my notes for that. Uh, uh, and I've just got at least got something there because so Desi Gamer what's that with gravitation what's up with fields gravitational fields uh, let me try and pull this stuff up where did it go Uh, oh, Paige, hello, sir. Could you please explain how to figure out specific heat capacity uh, of a metal of known mass? Uh, okay, Paige, uh, I, I will get back to you. Uh, well, let me have a look at this uh, Desi Gamer. Uh, okay, how? Uh, okay. Desi Gamer, you're gonna have to give me a bit more information because it's quite a big, it's quite a big chapter. And now, no, oh, that'd be the live chat. Where? Why is it not coming up? Okay, here we go. Let me get it a bit bigger. Okay, so, uh, Desi Gamer, is there anything specific that you're struggling with with gravitation? Okay, is there anything specific? Because uh, I can just go through the notes quickly, but uh, uh, the the first thing really in in the Cambridge in Cambridge, okay, so gravitational fields. So in uh, in a, in physics, a gravitational field is a model used to explain the influence that a massive body extends into the space around itself, uh, producing a force uh, on another body. This gravitational field is used to explain gravitational phenomena. Uh, the gravitational field strength, G, is defined as the force per unit mass. And then you need to know the forces between... Uh, oh, Kepler's laws. Uh, are Ke I don't think Kepler's laws are in the Cambridge syllabus. Um, with the spin. Uh, go, uh, and the, uh, the, oh, sorry. The area that the, uh, the orbits put... Uh, as an as a planet's going around, the area that it takes up, um, I, I don't think Kepler's law. No, I don't. I've not done Kepler's laws, so that, that's something I can't help you with. I'm sorry. Um, I'm pretty. I'm. Desi Gamer, what what syllabus are you are you doing the Cambridge? Because I don't think Kepler's laws are in the. Um, are in the uh, syllabus. 
Uh, okay, uh, let me help you, Paige, very quickly. Uh, so Paige is saying, uh, let, me, let me go across. Okay, uh, hello, sir. After this, could you please explain how to figure out specific heat capacity of a, a metal of known mass? Okay, Paige, so uh, in class, I showed you there's, there's, there's a couple of different ways you can do it. So you can get your uh, metal. Okay. Uh, and then you can, uh, there's your metal. Okay. It's a bit like what we did with the stone. So you get your, your metal. Uh, see, I, I'm doing it in Pakistan. Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll, uh, Desi Gamer, I will come back to you in a second. Let me just help Paige for a second. Okay. So you got your metal here and you put it in water. Okay. And the water. I know you love my graphics, don't you? Okay. The water is at 100 degrees. Okay. Then, oh, by the way, you know the mass. So, so you measure the mass first. Let me put that there somewhere. There we go. So you uh, uh, measure the mass uh, of, your, of your metal. Okay, so you know the mass of the metal. Then what you do is in a second container, okay, you have another load of water, okay, uh, and you measure the temperature, okay, before and after you put the metal in. So now I'm going to put my metal in, okay, okay, so I'm putting my metal in like that. Okay, so from this, okay, what will happen is the temperature of the water is going to go up. Okay, so let me just do something here, like, uh, okay. Okay, so this is 100 degrees. Okay, so that was the temperature of your metal. Uh, and then... Obviously, the water, the temperature of the water is going to increase like that. So this is going to be what we call, uh, we can call it delta T uh, W. The, uh, the temperature of the uh, rock, uh, sorry, not the rock, sorry, the metal is going to change. So that'll be delta T uh, M. Okay, now what's happening is the, the rock, why do I keep saying rock? The metal, I know why I keep saying rock, because when we did it in class, I was using rocks. Okay, so the energy goes from the rock to heating up the water. Okay. Uh, Desi Gamer, can I get your notes? Uh, yes, you can. Uh, if you just leave me a message on uh, on the main board, or I think on there you can get my email address. So if you want to get my notes, that's fine. It's not a problem. I can send you my notes. Uh, but just leave me a, like an email address. I think you can send like a private message. So just whilst you're looking for that, have a look there and then I'll gladly send you my notes. Okay, so Paige, going back to your problem. So the idea is that the energy goes uh, from the metal uh, to the cold water. Okay, I know the mass of the metal and I know the mass of the water. Okay, so with this, I can use the specific heat capacity problem. Uh, sorry, equation. Although it might be a problem for some people. Okay, so we know the change in energy, which is delta Q, is equal to M, okay, metal, uh, plus C, metal, plus delta T, metal. That will be equal to the mass of the water times the specific heat capacity of the water, which you can just look it up in a textbook, but it's 4200 times by the change in temperature of the water okay now you know everything except for this the specific heat capacity of the metal and i'm going to see if i can do this now so cm is equal to m w c w delta t w over uh, the mass of the metal times by the change in temperature 
of the metal. Okay, and that's how you will find out uh, uh, the specific heat capacity uh, of a metal of known mass. Paige, how is that? Yay, nay? Is it making any kind of sense? I hope so, because you got your test on Friday. Uh, what else must you go through? Uh, oh, yeah, properties of uh, materials when they're exposed to like temperature, so like solids, liquids, and gases, and how they expand and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, Paige, are you with me? Has that made any sense? Page, is that making sense? Are you with me, Page? Oh, you're gone. Uh, One second, I'm just going to see if anyone's using the internet because it's suddenly gone very slow. Sorry about that. Okay. Page, yay? Okay. Uh, anything else? It's only gone a lot faster again, so I think we're back in business. Page, it, it has made sense. Okay, cool. Okay, so you're going to get something like this in your test. So, I mean, something like that. Obviously... Could be anything, but you'll you probably get something like that. Also, uh, latent heat as well. So, uh, uh, where you, you know, you got your, your temperature doing something like this. Okay. Uh, then here uh, when you got the the change in uh, sorry there's no change in temperature then you just say delta q equals ml okay and then l is in this case uh This one here would be fusion. And then this here is vaporization. All right, Paige. Uh, yeah, latent heat. There you go. So I think there's a bit of a delay. Um, so whenever you've got a phase change, okay, the energy doesn't go to uh, uh, increase the kinetic energy. So uh, strangely, if you've got ice and water, and in the case of the, the both are uh, uh, zero degrees. So what you're doing really is the energy in your little uh, block of ice okay is not going to increase the kinetic energy but it's going to uh change the phase or or basically break apart the forces of cohesion between the molecules 
okay so that's why you need the energy so everything happens at zero degrees C okay uh, okay okay I sent this on my side before you went to latent heat so the, okay it's okay page it's cool okay so uh, I think that's it really you just need to know the understand that you know when you go from uh, if something's going from like okay so uh, a solid to a liquid at a constant temperature the kinetic energy remains the same but the uh, energy goes to uh, uh, break apart the bonds between the molecules and it's exactly the same with going from a liquid to a gas you also break up the uh, uh, you also break up the the, uh, the the bonds between the the liquid uh, and then uh, the gas is free to float away okay page uh, I will see you tomorrow unless you've got anything else uh, who is next jazz Gupta hi sir can you explain the work of the AC generator in detail I don't get it okay uh, let me get a new page so just bear with me because I'm a rubbish at drawing uh, okay so uh, this will be our north this will be our south uh, pole so obviously you have to have a north and a south pole of a magnet but I'm just showing you just just the north side and just the south side so I'm not breaking any uh, laws here by just writing north and south that I'm obviously there will be a south side of this magnet as well on the left and a north side of the magnet on the on the right so the magnetic field is going across like this from the north to the south okay let me do this like that then let me add there's my coil of wire okay and then there you're gonna have to have your split ring I'm just gonna do this so and then you'll have brushes as well okay so uh, let me just give this a bit of labeling so we've got uh, the coil and we've got our split rings uh, and then these are the brushes which are normally made from uh, are normally made from graphite uh okay okay sorry one last question can you please explain the thermocouple page i will do uh to just hold it on and uh, let me just do this okay so uh jazz what you're going to think about is as this thing is rotating okay like this so it's going on like that the wire here is cutting through the field lines now you'll only get electrons to move when the wire is cutting through the field lines so at the moment it's going to be cutting through the field lines but at a, at a certain point uh, every half rotation okay uh, if I just say okay there's the field lines like that okay so here's my uh, wire when my wire is moving downwards okay it's cutting the field lines but let me just go backwards like that when my wire is going with the field lines nothing happens okay so right so when it's going like that with the field lines or if it's moving backwards if my little wire is moving in the opposite direction of the field lines like anti-parallel nothing happens no uh, electrons will move inside the wire the wire you have to have uh, 
the wire cutting the field lines for anything to happen. So, as the wire is rotating, when it's, when the, yeah, let me change the, so when this part down here is going in this direction, this part here is going here, okay, nothing's happening, we won't generate any electricity, however, when here and here, you'll generate a maximum amount of electricity because you're cutting the field line. So this is why you end up with a sine wave like this. Okay, as the field, go, uh, as the wire goes up one way, okay, then it goes back down the other way. And then when it's up here, okay, so when you're, okay, so try and imagine this in like, like it's hard to imagine, but imagine it in 3D. So like it's going, and now I'm trying to look at myself and I'm confusing myself now. But it's going around like this, okay? Okay, so as it's going round and round and round like that, okay, you've got uh, one pole of the magnet here, one pole of the magnet here. So as it's going round and round and round like that, okay, it's going, it's going like that, okay. When it's up here and when it's down here, it's moving parallel with the field, so it doesn't do anything. When it's going up here, it's cutting the fields in one direction. When it's going down, it's cutting the fields in the opposite direction. So as you're going round and round and round like that, okay, uh, it will cut in one direction. The electricity goes in one direction, goes across. You don't make any electricity, goes back down, makes electricity in the opposite direction, and then so on and so on and so on. Uh, Jazz Gupta, has that made any sense? Is that making any kind of sense, how it's working? And if that's making sense, I'm going to go on to Paige's problem with a the thermocouple. Yeah, come on. Let's hear. I hope that made any kind of sense. Jazz? Yay? Nay? Yay? No. I just don't know. I just don't know. I don't know if it makes sense. No, but it is it is it is hard to get your head around. All right, Paige, let me just quickly go down here. I can make some space on here. Thermocouple. Okay, so uh, you have one wire here. And I'm going to make another color. Okay, and then you have another wire here and here, and then that goes into a voltmeter like that. Uh, okay, so this part here is uh, uh, what we call the junctions. Come on, tablet. And then that part there. Now, really, you can have any other metal, so it whatever you have like metal one here so this might be copper and then maybe here this might be uh, uh i don't know you could say steel or yeah iron i guess the iron would work D it doesn't really matter what the metals are as long as the different metals okay so uh you have used one of the junctions as like a reference junction so you just kind of just leave that one out and don't do anything with it whereas the other one okay uh okay maybe you want to just test like a flame so this will get hot here now what will happen is you'll end up creating a voltage okay so if you create a voltage here you've got a difference in temperature from you've got you know uh uh, so you've got uh, maybe uh, a temp here, temperature here, and then it's hot over here. Okay, maybe this is like your reference temperature. Okay, then you, you, what you can do is you need, okay, what's so important is you need to calibrate your equipment. So uh, at the hot junction, okay, it might be giving off a certain voltage. Now, uh 
you 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 won't be asked to like calculate this in the uh, I don't think you'll be able to ask to do this in the exam or in the test where you've got to work out the the volts per uh, like degree okay but what's important is when it comes to using a thermocouple okay oh jazz scripture yes it makes sense okay that's awesome okay thanks so much uh, this, this right junction well I've lost my trail of thought now uh, oh yeah okay so what is important is you need to calibrate it okay so uh, if I ha was asked in a test to like describe what's going on okay I would say you have two similar metals okay then there's going to be that will create a voltage okay so you would measure voltage okay and then you would just have a known calibration so it'd be calibrated i'm going to try and spell calibrate now yeah. so you know uh the relationship between like the change in voltage with the change in uh, degree c so you would know the voltage that you create the change in the voltage will give you the uh the change in the car uh, sorry the change in the voltage will give you the change in the temperature okay uh page is that making a bit more sense i, I think we'll go through this in class as well to be honest because you've got your test on friday uh we've got to do uh three lessons of work and i can just do like a revision on thursday okay and we can just do like a big like uh, a spread on the uh on a powerpoint in fact i might even use some of these that i'm making although they're a little bit messy okay page is that uh, is that cleared it up yeah you know i don't know Okay, uh, anyone else out there? Not sure of anything. I want me to go through 15 minutes left about, and then I'm going to call it a day. So uh, if you've got any any problems, just shout. Uh, is my, I hope my audio is working. Oh yeah, it is. Okay, it's fine. Yeah, so uh, go on. Anything else uh, you're not sure about, Paige? I hope that, I hope that, uh, I hope that has explained it. And I don't know why, it's a shame, but I'm sorry, our experiment when we did this in class, it didn't really work very well. Uh, because uh, we were trying to, uh, oh, well, by coincidence, I've got some copper here. Uh, just for those people, uh, if you're out there and you want to make your own thermocouple, it's not that difficult to do. The only problem is the voltage that you produce really is very, very small. And the problem that we had in class was that the, uh, the voltmeters that we were using are just not sensitive enough. Okay, so you just get like, uh, I wonder if you guys can even see that. Okay, so you just get your piece of copper or something like that, and you scrape the enamel off the edges. Okay, and then uh, you just make sure uh, that the two metals are actually touching, uh, like intertwined around each other. And then you put the, the, so that's called one of the junctions, so obviously you've got two junctions here. Uh, put that in the uh, heat source, and then there you go. Knowledge is power. I want to teach myself A level physics. Where do I start? Uh, where do I start? Uh, well, it depends. I mean, are you. I want to teach myself like A level physics. Okay, thanks, Paige. No problem. I'll see you tomorrow, unless you've got anything else you want to ask me. Uh, I want to teach myself A level physics. Where do I start? Well, knowledge is power. Firstly, what. Uh, what do you have available like are you going to are you are you currently going to a school or are you uh, i don't know you, you just give me some information because i mean, I mean it a level is a difficult thing to especially a level physics it depends how good your maths is uh 
but to, to try and teach yourself is it'd be tricky look i'm not saying it can't be done uh you could definitely do it you could self-teach yourself there's loads of guys on the internet now doing like things like what i'm doing here where you can just like jump in and chat and uh ask questions and stuff uh so there's a lot of resources out there i mean uh when i was when i was a lad uh we just had a book i still i still have my physics textbook in fact i have it right here uh if you guys want to know this is what i studied my uh, a levels with and i've still got it today and i i really really like this textbook uh and this is not a plug uh but this is just an appreciation i always use this uh, roger mancaster a level physics yeah i'll see you tomorrow page uh yeah i i use this a level physics book in fact let me just get out of the way of the microphone uh and this is my copy from when i did my a levels uh i, I think it's such a great book it, it's you might say it's a bit dense for 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 something nowadays uh it definitely isn't in color but i i really really found it very very useful but i guess also uh i'll be starting in college after my holidays i'll be doing a level maths uh physics and chemistry okay awesome choice because that's yeah i i did exactly the same thing yeah uh that's what i started with uh a level physics chemistry maths uh what syllabus do you know do you know what syllabus you're going to do are you going to do the uh so there's aqa there's ed excel uh the one that i did was wjc uh because although i live in south africa now i was living in wales uh uh, so th there's a lot of different uh, um, exam bodies that you can do and they've all got the slight I mean obviously physics is physics but they all have slightly different specifications so what I, what I would do is okay if you're going to start at a college firstly do you know what specification you're going to use okay hello uh, do you know what specification you're going to use okay so let me write some of these down so uh there's uh there's aqa uh I, I liked aqa i did teach aqa when i was teaching in wales the aqa specification and it's got uh, the thing i liked about it was there's loads of stuff about uh particles uh you could do ed excel uh what else is the uh there's ocr isn't there ocr um you can have, the one i do at the moment is the cambridge and what I love about the Cambridge is it really does promote thinking skills. I mean, that's my, my, per I mean, I like that. I, I liked uh, teaching AQA, but I really, I do love uh, teaching Cambridge. Okay. Well, that, that's awesome. AQA. Uh, in fact, I've got this as well. This, this is another, but last time I was in the UK, uh, I went to see my mum and dad uh, and I came back with this textbook. This is uh, AQA physics. I thought I bought it in WH Smith's actually. Uh, which is harder, AQA, Edexcel, or Cambridge Physics? Ah, uh, harder, harder. Eh, uh, maybe the Cambridge International is, it is, it is tough. But they're all pretty much the same level, I would say. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, maybe the Cambridge is just slightly, the way that they ask the, the, uh, the problems, I'm not saying they're trying to trick you, but they just really promote thinking skills. They're really probing if you understand it or if the teachers just taught you how to just answer problems uh, but i tell you what you're going to love the aqa especially the uh uh the particle physics stuff is really good uh, and i remember when i was doing my uh wg oh let me put that down there as well so there's also uh w j e c i think i think that's all of them I've probably forgotten one or two. Uh, yeah, but I remember when I was doing AQA, the thing that I loved, uh, uh, the thing the thing that I really liked, uh, uh, oh, sorry, I'm losing my trail of thought now. Uh, what I loved about teaching the AQA is the particle physics stuff, okay? Uh, I, I really, really thought that was just... Uh, really really cool and it's so up to date i mean it is the you're, you're teaching the standard model which is really literally as far as we know in terms of particle theory okay uh okay hi, hi sir i oh, sorry so i'll ask you more doubts tomorrow and so your videos have been really helpful thanks for that okay that's so kind no well 
uh, I'm here to help. I don't know if I'll be here tomorrow. Uh, I think the videos, I'm trying to do it every Sunday evening. Okay, so Jazz, if you think of like another problem, well, you can tweet me. I don't know if you've got Twitter or you can set, leave a message on the uh, on the community forum. And, I, and then what I can do is I can kind of like prepare something for, for next week. So it's normally going to be... Uh, it's six o'clock here, six till seven South Africa time. So S A S T, which would be, I think we are two hours ahead of Universal time. So four till six U C T. And I, Jazz, I don't even know where you are in the world. So uh, this time, okay, next Sunday I will try and be here. So I'm going to try and do this at, like every Sunday. So I'll keep doing my usual like PowerPoint videos when I can. I'll put them up. But this is quite cool as well, just chatting to students all around the world and uh, hopefully not trying to confuse them too much. <laughs> I hope I'm doing okay. Uh, any other questions? We've got about nine minutes left of the session and then uh, I'm going uh, I'm going to call it a day because it's Sunday and I, uh, I need to go make some supper and uh, get ready for the uh, get ready for the week teaching ahead. Oh, I could just keep rambling. I can just keep rambling. <laughs> I, I've got. I do love. I do love teaching. Yeah, no, it's a lot of fun, and I love physics as well. Uh, I I do rely on my notes. Uh, or I, I maybe in about twenty years time, I'll just know this stuff so well. I'll just be able to bang, bang, bang. Uh, uh, just know that you know. So I don't want. No, it's good. Okay. Anything else anyone wants to ask me? Don't be shy. Any uh, any other Redham students? So I, that's why I teach uh, during the during the week. Any Redham students listening? Maybe maybe not. Maybe they're all studying hard for the tests on Monday. Otherwise, okay. I'll uh, do. You... Is that it? Are we done? Is it over? No. We've got eight minutes left. Eight minutes. Let's see. I wonder how many people... I wonder if I can even see how many people are watching. No. It doesn't tell me. Maybe it'll tell me later. Anyway, this video... Uh, the nice thing is, at least these things do get uploaded. Uh, after the after the session so you can go back and uh, watch it again uh, for more confusion uh, any questions Oh no, but okay, going back to uh, uh, Zaid Nori, hello. Have you got any questions for me? Yeah, going back to AQA, now I, I really did enjoy teaching it, and uh, uh, I, I hope you're going to enjoy learning, learning the uh, learning the syllabus. It, uh, it's, it is really cool. So, uh, have I missed anyone? Let me go back through. Yeah, I, I, I think this has been so much smoother than last time. Because last time I was really having problems. It seems much, much better now. Okay. So, I think moving the uh, the router across the... Uh, across the... Uh, across the room. The other side, so it's closer to me. I think it definitely has... Uh, definitely has helped.
Okay, guys. Uh, I think I'm going to call it a day. So, uh, I'm going to say this, just as a final. Uh, okay. What is going on? Why is this refusing? Okay, guys, bye for now. Uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I hope this has been useful. Uh, and I will see you same time, uh, hopefully same time next week. So, uh, okay, bye, guys.